Rachel also said that she that she opened for him in a conference or something. Mm-hmm. How do you not meet the host of the conference when you <sighs> open for the host of the conference? Like, I don't understand this. I heard that Rachel had complained about a unknown or unnamed like self-help guy that she thought was a jerk because he snubbed her during a conference or whatever where she opened for him. And she didn't say it was Tony, but everyone assumed it was Tony Robbins. No way she would call Tony a douche. No way. Not by name, but she was, I, that's what I heard that she had said like, oh, you know, sometimes you meet your heroes and they disappoint you. Like that type <gasps> of rhetoric. Someone commented, Laura says she found it. The Rachel Hollis talking crap about a uh, potentially Tony episode 135 of Rachel's podcast around 12 minutes but we're gonna okay. play it so I obviously neither one of us had listened to this this is coming from Laura Friedrich Friedrich Rich um so if it's wrong blame her <laughs> no just kidding but thank you this is awesome I've been like <laughs> don't searching blame for this. Laura <laughs> Laura's thank innocent you, Laura. we appreciate this <laughs> yes, we do. I'm just joking <laughs> Okay, let's play it. So this is from episode 135. This was made in 2020, February 2020, so about two years ago. And it's called What I Learned from Meeting Oprah. And if you remember, if you're on our stream from, I don't know, a few weeks ago, now, a couple months ago, we talked about how she met Oprah, and Oprah was not impressed with Rachel <laughs> by yeah. any stretch. So, so it's interesting. Okay, so I'm at the 11-minute mark, so we're going to jump in in the middle of this podcast. The second thing that I learned by getting to do the Oprah tour uh, is the difference between an alpha female and an alpha male. Let me speak in generalization (laughs) so I don't get myself in trouble. Um, I had the opportunity to speak on some really big stages in 2019 and I had the opportunity to speak for some people who before I went to speak for them were my heroes who are alpha, alpha males, very big in their field. Um, And one in particular, who um, on more than one occasion, I was asked to speak for, who still to this day, has never actually looked in my direction. Meaning, uh, went and opened and uh, flew and traveled and did all of these things to accommodate this opportunity to work with this person at, I'm using air quotes because, you know, y'all can't see me, but at his request and, um, never looked in my direction, never shook my hand, never thanked me for coming, never acknowledged me in any way. And the flip, well, let me sit in that for a minute. Um, was utterly devastating to me. Devastating. To have this person that I admired for um, most of my adult life sort of go, okay, you've earned your way into the room or you've kind of earned your way to a seat at the table, but now I will intentionally not acknowledge you so you know that you have gotten to here, but only so far. And I suppose that you could say there are all sorts of reasons why someone would invite you to their event and then not um, talk to you. Mm -hmm. I don't believe for a second that if I was a man, I would have been treated that way. And I also remember telling Dave, my husband, when I like I was so devastated when it happened the first time it happened twice, in case you're wondering if it was a fluke. Um, I told Dave as we were leaving the day that I cannot come out and thank people who have flown to another country or another state to speak on my stage is the day that I am no longer allowed to do this because I don't want to be that person. And that experience was, it was devastating. It was like the death of a hero. And I know that that sounds very dramatic and I'm setting it up because I want you to know the difference between an alpha male in that setting and an alpha female. I can think okay. of very f- okay. okay. Wow, damn! Yeah. Thank yeah, you, Laura. Stuff. Seriously, hold on, wait. Oh, we had- Laura, yeah, excellent investigation. You saved the day. That was like that was what I was anticipating hearing, but I was like, I can't find it. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe it's all a rumor. Maybe it wasn't recorded, but. 
that from this to like what that interview that I just listened to her like give for two <laughs> hours or her list, she was receiving from him t- night and day. And I much more you- respect her here in 2020. Yeah. Do you think that maybe like outside since, you know, when they were inside <laughs> of the podcast, God. I'm just uh, inside using of. air quotes just as Rachel might. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, what is she <laughs> When she was inside of the podcast, maybe she didn't call him out. But do you think outside of the podcast, like in the room or like on Zoom or whatever, do you think she was like, I was no. at your conference. Why didn't you say hi? I don't think so. Maybe, but I, I doubt it. I think she wants him to like her. And I think her boyfriend, uh, Boothing, um, <laughs> I got on my new sound bites. Uh, she wants, Boothing likes him. So I think that she has incentive to get him to continue to bring her on stages and stuff. So the past is the past, baby. And I don't know. But yeah, I, I, right. it's, she like kissed his ass after being devastated by it. To me, that's just, it's not setting women forward. It's setting us back as a gender. Yeah. I feel like acting that yeah. way. Dang, yeah. Dang, what a great oh, find. Wow. Thank you. That's a great find. Yeah, indeed. I that love was really it. good.